Hi there, my name's Conrad, and in this video I'm going to explain to you why I hate the in and out merge nodes in Nuke and give you four reasons why I think you should use mask and stencil instead. First of all, let's look at why you might be tempted to use the in and out nodes. Um, they are pretty obviously named. Um, they are a way of combining a map and an image. Um, so in this case we have a checkerboard and we have a rotor shape. And if I would like to see only the checkerboard inside the rotor shape, I can use the in node. And if I want to see everything for the checkerboard outside the rotor shape, I can use an out. Now, they're pretty obvious naming, and uh, I can see why that would be a tempting reason to use these nodes. But Nuke has two other operations that do exactly the same result. If you would like to replicate an in, you can also use a mask. And if you would like to replicate an out, you can also use a stencil. Now these mask and stencil operations give you the same results as the in and outs, but the difference is how you connect the two images to the merge node in the first place. If you look at this in node here, you can see that the checkerboard is connected to the A input and the rotor shape is connected to the B input. Whereas if you look at the mask, the checkerboard is connected to the B input and the rotor shape is connected to the A input. Now, in Nuke, the B input is always considered the primary input to a node um, and it's, a very, it's very good practice for you to try and build your comp scripts so that the image is always coming through the B input of your of your nodes. I'm going to use this slightly more complicated script to uh, go through the four reasons why it's important to keep your image in the B stream. Um, you can see here that my shot is this pretty comedy looking comp of a bird sitting on the back of a bear. Um, it's just two images, two stills that I've, I took myself, and uh, I'm just going to quickly go through how we're doing this comp. So, the right node's down here at the bottom, and if we work our way up, we can see that we've got two images, one over the other. We've got the bird over the bear, and this is the result. Um, now, when you open a script that uh, perhaps you haven't worked on for a while, or perhaps you picked up from another artist, the first thing you usually need to do is to figure out what's going on in the script. Now I find the easiest way to work out what's going on in a script is to start at the bottom and to disable nodes to see what's happening as I go. And that way you can narrow down where it bouts in the script you need to do any changes. So in this instance, if I disable this merge node, this over node here, then we see the bear. And this is because the B inputs to all nodes in Nuke are the primary ones, and when you disable any nodes, it's always the B input that is passed through. So by disabling this and the bird disappearing, I know that if I need to make notes on the bird, I need to come across to this part of my script. And here you can see the bird. So I can either keep looking at this um, final comp, and disable stuff or I can work my way up. Now in this case I'm going to look at the final comp and disable these nodes as I go. So here I have a roto paint and a stencil node and you can see that I've painted some fur detail in to try and bed the feet of the bird into the back of the bear, make it look like he's, his claws are in the fur. Um, and then here we have a transform and a crop that's going to move the bird in position. I'm going to leave those there. Right here I've got another roto shape that is stenciling out some garbage mat stuff. Um, here I have some more roto shapes that are stenciling out the hand that the bird was originally sitting on. Here I have another garbage shape which I'm using as a mask instead of a stencil. And I've done a garbage shape around the bird to get rid of all the extra bits of garbage key. And then up here, I've got a copy and a pre -malt, um which is coming from my Kia. I was actually pleasantly surprised that I could pull a, a reasonably good key using the RBK Kia, considering the background's pretty dark and 
and um, inconsistent, but I got a pretty good starting key in the first place. I didn't want it to be perfect anyway because I needed to show you how these garbage mats were going to work. So by disabling these nodes and working my way up the tree, I can figure out what's going on in the script and where I might need to make a change. Now, I've got the same setup over here, which, if you look, gives me exactly the same final image. But in this setup, instead of using masks and stencils, I'm using ins and outs. So let's see what happens when I disable nodes as I go along here. So here I'm viewing my final comp and we see the bird with his claws sitting nice and deep in the fur of the bear and I get to the first node. If I disable that, you can see that Nuke is reading the B input instead of the A input because that's what happens when you disable a node. But the B input in an out node is not the final image, it's the map. So instantly everything changes and it all gets very confusing. Same thing happens up here. If I disable this wrote this uh, garbage shape, which I was using to get rid of some of the rough bits of key, if I disable this, you can see that I get this weird black shape where the bird, where the roto is, rather than if I did it over here, if I disable this node, I get the bits that are being masked out, which makes much more sense to me. This is um, a much more logical result from disabling nodes. And if you're trying to figure out someone else's script, you, you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, it's Friday, the client's asked, kicked the shop back and asked you to change the color of the bird. And um, the artist who did it the first time around has gone home and you get asked to make this quick change and you go through the script and you start disabling stuff, trying to figure out what's going on and you see results like this. It makes no sin sense and uh, it is very frustrating. So disabling nodes is reason one, number one as to why I think it's important to keep your B image in the, sorry, your main image in the B input and why masks and stencils are better than ins and outs. So along with disabling nodes, um, preferring the B input, the mix also prefers the B input. So if I mix down this node, you can see that I'm bringing back some of what's being masked out and perhaps this instance down here where I'm embedding the feet might work better. So maybe we want to see you know, some semi-transparent fur and we can use this mix here to mix back the amount, the transparency of the fur that's going over the claws. Maybe we want it halfway. Okay, so you know that's a very reasonable use of the mix slider in there. If I was to do the same thing in an out node, when I mix the slider, remember that it's mixing back the B input. So instead of mixing back some of the image, it's going to start mixing back the mat. And actually the whole bird's going to go semi-transparent. Now that renders the mix slider pretty useless and um, I think is a another good reason why we should stick to stencils and masks instead of ins and outs. Now the next two reasons, still based on the B input, but are a little more technical. Um, so in this instance, I have the bird image that I'm bringing in is, it's a, a photo that I took, so it's pretty high res, it's uh, 3,000, uh, sorry, 3,044 pixels by 3,044 pixels. Now, these roto shapes are actually the nuke default, which is defaults to 2K. And when I mix these two images together, the merge node takes the format from the B input. So in this case, even though my roto shape is not um, the same size as the image, um, the image resolution, of the image format is the is the same. Um, I mean, there are ways around this. I could reformat the the, um, the roto node. I could plug the roto node in and set replace over here. 
um, and that would give me the shape that's the same format, uh, the same resolution as the image. But you know, sometimes you just need to do a quick shape, and the thing you're working on is not the same format as your project. Um, so this uh, sometimes you often end up with situations like this. It's not best practice, but it's, it works. Um, if, however, I use an in and I come down this way, because the merge node is taking the format from the roto instead of the image, and the roto is set to 2K, I end up with this crazy situation where I still have all the image. You can see that it's all there outside the bounding box, but because I'm matching the roto shape format and the roto shape actually goes outside its own its own format, I can't see the result of what's going on. Um, as I go down here, you can see the format keeps getting bigger, sorry, the bounding box keeps getting bigger. Um, and the transform and the crop at the bottom actually ends up putting everything back in the same place as it would because um, everything's based from zero, so it doesn't really matter. We end up with the same result over the final image, we just end up with two different, very different ways of getting there. Um, like I say, it doesn't matter on the final image, but the way we get there is different. And having these crazy formats that match the shape, the, the roto shape rather than your image, is just much more difficult to work with. So having the, the format being passed through the B stream, I think makes uh, another good reason as to why you should stick to stencils and masks rather than ins and outs. And then the very final reason, still related to the B stream, um, the B stream issue, uh, is that the B stream also passes through the metadata by default. So if I view this view metadata node, this is all the metadata that's coming in from this TIFF file here. Uh, it has um, all the information from the camera, uh, the, the focal length, the flash, um, the aperture, all this stuff from the camera. Um, on smaller projects this might not be very important, but I know in a lot of bigger companies all this metadata is often in the plate, or the EXRs from the plate, and um, they've written a lot of pipeline tools around using this metadata. Now, if I start looking through these merge nodes, you can see that this metadata stays the same. And that's because by default, um, the merge nodes take the metadata from the B input, um, which means all this information in the metadata stream is going to be the same as the met as the image from uh, as the metadata from the image up here. Now, if I go and look over here and plug it in to these ins instead of masks, you'll see that we lose all this metadata, and this is because by default the metadata comes through the B stream. Now, again. Uh, same with the format, we can work around this. There are ways of fixing this problem. Um, we could change this to A, or we could change this to all, but then we'd have to do that for every node that we, every in node or out node that we do, or we'd have to come up with some Python that makes it our default, and there's no reason really when we can just use mask and stencil in the first place, and it does exactly what we want. So. There are the four reasons why it's very important to use, uh, to keep your image in the B stream, and four reasons why the in and out nodes break that. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. If you completely disagree with me and you think there are some valid uses for the in and out nodes, let me know in the comments below. Um, you can check out my website for some more tips. Um, thank you very much for watching.